Vicky, I'm the director of the Mind Body Food Institute, and you are joining us for another coaching conversation where we bring you other coaches, entrepreneurs, and business owners who are doing wonderful things out in the world so that we can share with you what they've done, how they've got to where they are, so that it can inspire you to take those first steps. Today, we have the lovely Merida Weaver. She's an entrepreneur, she is creator of the Courseologist online course and program. And she's coming to us today from beautiful Noosa, up uh, a little bit further north of Brisbane in Queensland. Hi, Merida. Hello, how are you? Very well. And I'm so excited because people may not know, and they won't know, but we work together at the Queensland Art Gallery about, what, 10 to 15 very, years ago? A very, very long time ago. Actually, I was there for eight years, so it would be closing on 18 years ago since we first started there which is amazing we've reconnected recently and it's just been so lovely to see what you've been doing it's amazing and very exciting and I think very inspirational and helpful for a lot of our holistic life coaching students at the moment because you're doing what a lot of people would love to do so if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and just tell us the story of what's what you started with how that evolved almost pleasantly, surprisingly, and where it's got you to now as to what you're doing now. All right. So, well, um, I started in natural skincare, which was just a hobby initially. And then, and as you know, Vicky, I was running that on the side when we were working together at the gallery um, and grew that into quite a profitable business. We were exporting and doing um, all sorts of um Pretty cool things with that business, you know, when it was really just at its beginning stages, the natural skincare coming coming out into the mainstream. So we did that and then I had people which had seen me start and grow the business from home into this other company and asking me how, how I was doing it and could I help them and those sorts of things. So from there... Um, I started teaching and creating ranges for other people and we would package it and help them start um, their business basically from scratch and work through that whole process. So um, that I did that for several years and then that grew into another, we used that model and rolled it out into another um, industry um, so that I could have a family and have my beautiful little girl. Um, and really from there, I guess, everything converted into an online business. So we were in Brisbane at the time and we had um, a couple of different offices and the leases came up and my husband and I sort of looked at each other and said, why are we here? We don't need to be here anymore. You know, we, everything is relocatable. And, and he's a surfer um, and I love the beach. And so we ended up moving up here. and. Um, that's where we've been living since then. So we have a really like blessed lifestyle. Every day we're like, well, we're so lucky to be able to live here and enjoy the beach and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, that's awesome. what we do. So essentially it's all online. We just have a variety of online businesses. Wow. And I think um, a lot of people when they enter into entrepreneurship, small business, coaching, the reasons that they, well, not, not the main reasons. Obviously, we, we can't enter into this work unless our main intention is to help other people. But one of the reasons to work for ourselves, to have our own businesses, to be entrepreneurs while helping people is so that we can be location dependent, independent. We can have more financial freedom, more time to do the things that we want to do, spend with our families. So in the beginning, that sounds like it's a dream. So... Yeah. You're living that dream now. When you look back, what do, you, what do you see now was absolutely necessary for you to go through, good and bad, for you to be able to get to this point where you are, you are now living your dream life, you're living at a beach and your husband can go surfing and you have an online business that you could essentially take anywhere? Yeah. Um, look, honestly, one of the biggest leaps of faith was quitting quitting my job and taking that leap and just going, okay, you know what? It's time to fly. Um, and that's a really hard thing to do, 
to lose that level of security. So I guess just finding finding a way that you can do that and remain in your comfort zone um, and that it's practical to, and, you know, you can still, whether you've got savings or, you know, some, some way of being able to manage it. Um, because certainly I think you would know Vicky and anybody else that's ever started a business, um, it takes a lot of hard work until you build that business so that it is completely reliable and sustainable. Um, so you need to have things in place, but the, actually even when things are in place, being able to take that step and go, you know what, I'm cutting off this safety net, it's scary and it's hard. <laughs> And it's so liberating, it's just awesome. We all dream about doing it, but it's a really hard thing to do. Um, so that was one of the big things, I think. And just, um, and yeah, I mean, for us, having that location change as well, you know, all our family was in Brisbane, our friends were in Brisbane. So it was like, let's just do it. So we actually rented, when we got here, we rented the 12 months just to get a feel. Uh, whether this was where we should be um, and yeah it didn't take long for us to work out but yeah that was okay <laughs> um, but I guess yeah just giving doing that but giving yourself support systems as well making wise choices about it yeah and uh, you said to me uh, earlier that you had even considered checking out Bali to see whether or not you might want to live in Bali six months of the year and mm. Australia the other six months of the year. So even the yeah. fact that you were in a position to be able to do that, how did that feel? Knowing that you put in the work, you'd, you'd done what needed to be done to get to the point where you could actually consider doing that. Yeah, oh, it was awesome. Um, so we, before my daughter started school, because we used to travel a lot, we traveled all the time. Um, and then when I had Amali, um, we just didn't travel as much. It was just easier with routines and all that sort of stuff. Um, and so the year before she started school, we were like, okay, there's no reason why we actually do need to be again in one spot. Um, maybe we should think about splitting time. And so we spent three months traveling uh, Bali with Amali. She, she was four at the time. Um, and culturally for her, we wanted to give her some real life experiences as well. Um, and not just, you know, a week where you kind of see a different beach and, but to actually be absorbed in a lifestyle. So, um, so we traveled for three months, we moved every week. Uh, we still ran the business, you know, there, we actually trained staff while we were there. One of our staff, offshore staff members flew out and we trained her by the pool. So, <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, <laughs> Um, and then, um, yeah, it, it, as it turned out, it, it wasn't going to work. The school calendars don't line up. They run on the American school calendar. Mm -hmm. And, um, we just thought, okay, it, it is actually going to be too difficult socially for her because we saw that when we got there, we were like, okay, no, she's a really social kid and she, she yeah, she needs constant Sort of stuff so yeah we're here back here again and, and and it's working great but we can definitely we know that we can do that stuff anytime yeah mm. which is amazing. so for anybody wanting to build a business coaching doing whatever kind of specialty that they want to creating something online so that they can be location you know independent what would you say would be the, the top strategies that they would need to put in place? What do they really need to be clear on from the get-go that they need to do these things, whether it's a systematic approach or whether it's just, you know, top three uh, strategies or, or uh, tools? What do you think would be the biggest things that you would say from your experience to help someone in that position now wanting to do that? I think probably... Um yeah, clarity around your target audience, obviously, um, because when you, when like whether you're location based or or being able to have an online business and move, if you have that total clarity around your audience, and if you're building that while you're stuck in wherever it is that you are or where you're living in a certain place, if you build that audience, then 
if you've got that there, look, you can roll out programs. You can, you've got an, a, a customer base waiting to learn more from you, so long as you're nurturing them and looking after them. So um, definitely, I think, being really clear about who it is you serve and looking after them and building that as much as you can. So whether that's on your social media platforms or, you know, through your email lists and all of those different angles. Um, so that would be a really big one. And that was one which um, I think because, because I'm a bit multi-passionate, I think, you know, I, <laughs> um, that is what proves a challenge to me because I'm, I don't have audiences in all of these spaces. So... Um, yes, with Courseologist, my latest course, it's really, uh, uh, like, the last couple of years for me have been about um, finding why I'm here, I guess, and for a lot of people who you're um, working with, they're probably in a similar situation where they're really asking themselves some tough questions and finding where they fit in the world and what they're here to contribute. Um, and so for me, it's really working with the, the people that are very passion-based, um, the light workers, the people that are here to, to make change in the world um, and to help them have a voice. So I'm quite clear about that now, but I wasn't when I started. I just was being pulled on this path and this is, here I am, I know now. Um, so for those people that already have that clarity, um, you know, it becomes much easier to create an online course when you've already got the audience there. Um, mastering certain softwares and those sorts of things. So just getting yourself comfortable. Um, and I think the other big thing is about visibility is um, not to be afraid to be seen. And certainly for me and for a lot of the people who are my target audience, that is a really big thing. It's a big fear factor to overcome. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. so what would you say, Narada, has been a really helpful tool for you to overcome that fear of being seen and putting yourself out there online? Um, I think doing, um, doing a lot of personal, you know, work on yourself and, um, you know, it, it, that's what it all comes back to. The more work you do on yourself, the more you can help others, the more you can give. Um, and so I've done a lot of energy clearings and, um, you know, different holistic practices to help me actually kind of, I think, reveal what this irrational kind of fear is and then be able to step through it. So it's, yeah, it's quite challenging. And even, you know, for somebody that's in the online space, um, and has, like I have been for 10 years, essentially. Uh, I've, video is fine. I'm okay with that. But like live streaming and those sorts of live interactions, that's been on my radar for well over 12 months and it has terrified the life out of me. <laughs> um, and that was one which I actually challenged and conquered last week. I did a live stream every day as a part of challenge. So, yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. It's a hard so, one. It's a hard one for a lot of people. It's massive. And it, and it feels irrational. Like I would have physical reactions um, to be able to do it. Like my throat would close. I physically couldn't speak. Um, and so, yeah, like working through those sorts of things and and getting to the point where you just have to step through the fear and you just have to do it. And that is with anything in business. I think you will always come across challenges and at some point you just need to go, you know what, today's the day. I'm doing something that scares the living life out of me every day and today it's your turn. <laughs> yeah. A good way to look at it is to change the language that you use around it instead of, I have to do this, I've got to do this. I'm choosing to do this. I'm yeah. choosing to do this. Even though it scares me, I'm choosing to do it because I can see it's going to get me over the next hurdle or it's going to take me that next step further. Yes, definitely. And that's, that's a perfect thing to do, which is probably I should do that more often. <laughs> <laughs> 
So um, throughout our course now in, our, in stage two, we look at mind body tools, neuroscience, understanding chronic stress and um, positive psychology. And the students all learn that in psychology approaches, traditionally it's been focused on mental health issues and on our weaknesses. And what we do is we turn it around and help people to focus on their strengths. So what strengths have you learned about yourself that you've cultivated throughout this process of taking those steps, overcoming fear that you think would be really helpful for some of the students to really start looking at, to recognize maybe they already have those strengths, that they yeah. already have maybe what they need inside to help them take those steps. It's just figuring out the steps and the process and how. Yeah. Look, honestly, I'm a firm believer that um, you have everything that you need right here. Like, and it's just finding the tools that will be compatible with that in order to make it bigger you know um it doesn't mean it's going to be easy by any means but i think yeah when when you really look at who you are as a person you will you will know okay these are my strengths and um i think for me i am very much a people person so i love that interaction and that play and um so you know, it's finding that balance. It's finding how you can use that in a, in a way that feels safe for you or that pushes boundaries and takes it to the next level. So it's really just being, I think, being honest with yourself and, and, and going, okay, maybe I'm super organised. Maybe that's one of your strengths. Well, then just organise. Okay, well, what is it that I need to do? What is it that I need to learn? And how am I going to implement that? So... You know, people have so many amazing skills and this is one of the things which I find. I talk to so many healers and practitioners and things like that who are in a one-on-one -on -one practice and they just have incredible skills that could benefit the world in such a big way that they don't actually value their work and they don't believe that they can do it. Mm. And so I think belief is such a major part of it really just knowing okay what i have is valuable and i can share it and i can step forward and do it so it's a really important probably the most important one actually <laughs> yeah yeah i i am so pleased that you brought that up because it is it's such an important topic because i i see so many people in the holistic space, the spiritual space, the alternative complementary therapies space who just don't value their worth. And, and sometimes there's that fear of because I am a, a helper or a healer or a, you know, complementary therapist, I shouldn't charge for my services or I shouldn't charge too much for my services. What do you, what do you say to that in having been on both sides of receiving the services and also providing them? in that space what what do you say to that fear um you have to find what's comfortable for you but in a lot of cases um I, yeah they so undervalue it and i i'm seeing now the the light workers that are coming out and and the people that are making the impact they see their value and when they see their value, everybody else sees their value. And that is what makes the shift. Mm, so, yeah, yeah I think um, just try it. See how it feels. Test it, um, you know, like test in your body and see, okay, what am I worth? Has, have you tested and asked that question? Because that was one thing a kinesiologist did with me. And I was like, oh, okay. I actually physically believed I was worth a lot more than what I was charging at that point. Um, and I think that gave me a little bit of a gateway to move forward. And when I actually believed it, it really upped the ante in my business big time. So, you know, that that belief and, and testing it, just, just try it and see how it feels. And all of a sudden you'll actually, people will appreciate you more and then you start to value what you can offer. Mm, yeah, I think um, I, I think it, it's so easy for us to undervalue the impact that we can provide for our clients. 
And this is something I've been saying to my old students from a different course in our meditation therapy courses and holistic counseling is that even in the very first session, if you have a stressed out client who's feeling very overwhelmed, who is feeling anxious, who is panicked, who is suffering from sleep deprivation and aggravation and lack of patience, and it's really affecting not just their, their work relationships, but their home relationships, by just educating them on what the stress response actually is and teaching them how to breathe correctly. Most people don't breathe correctly. They breathe up into their chest and they take the short, sharp breaths and it activates the stress response and signals the nervous system to enter fight or flight. And just teaching them how to breathe down into the belly, diaphragmatically slowing down the breath, bringing, bringing their higher thinking into the moment, being mindful is such a massive shift for them physically but it might seem like we're, we're doing very little, just teaching them how to breathe correctly, but it has a massive impact on that person. And that to them is so valuable. It's highly valuable. And they're walking away with a tool that is a self-help method for calming their nervous system, quieting their mind, relaxing their body, et cetera. And that is going to help them to sleep better and, and all of the rest of it. So it is so important. I'm really pleased that you, you, you said that. It, it's really important to value ourselves first and value the, the, the knowledge that we have and the impact that changes the feeling for our client. If we can help them to change how they feel in that moment, that's, that's worth it to them. That's the key, yeah. And then that impact, like it, that person will see all of those physical benefits for themselves, but then it's all those other people in their circle too, you know, their family, their workmates, their children, and that flow on, you know, like such a simple thing that you can do, but such a massive effect at the end of the day. So the value of that is much more than just what you, what you see. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. Awesome. There's actually in, uh, in our training vault, we actually have uh, one of our coaching conversations around success and money. And it's one of our students from February where we were discussing her fear around money or her, her prejudice or her ideas around money. And one of the tools, one of the exercises that I got her to do was to place her hands on the desk in front of her, close her eyes, do some deep diaphragmatic breathing to come into her body. And just with some coaching questions, just some very short, powerful questions to ask her to tune into what she believed about money and what what figure came up for her that would be a happy price, a figure in her mind that wasn't about the fear of making too much a year or so before when her business was looking to double. Incidentally, she was actually also in skincare and how that freaked her out and, and gave her so much fear and pressure around trying to make that happen that it all just sort of went pear-shaped. So we did an exercise where we asked her to tune into her body and really ask her body what feels comfortable for you in the amount that you want to earn that you feel you could allow into your life and she came up with quite a significant figure it was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and that didn't scare her as much um at that point in time as whatever figure it was the year before so you know asking your body and tuning into your own inner wisdom is, is such a priceless piece of information and when you say testing we do, we, we do have a, another coaching conversation with a kinesiologist talking about energies and testing and things like that. But I love how you've woven that in because it's so important, particularly in our holistic life coaching course, because we touch on quite deeply the mind-body connection and the body-mind, the subconscious, and understanding our own fears, limiting beliefs, our values, needs, and really doing our own work as we're progressing through the course to, to provide that value for our clients. So, um, so it was wonderful that you're, you're in touch with all of that and you've done that. So what would you say has been your biggest lesson about yourself? What have you grown in, within yourself going on this journey? Because we're always constantly growing and learning and, and developing and changing. What have you learned about yourself through this process from starting, following the journey, allowing the flow and facing the fear, being seen, and putting your gifts out into the world. What's been your biggest lessons that you've learned about yourself? I think um, probably one of the biggest ones is, I think in, in an eightly I'm a bit of a people pleaser. And so for me, when I first began um, 
you know, teaching other people and that sort of thing, it was around setting boundaries and setting healthy boundaries. Because I kind of just, oh, you know, just if you've got a question, let me know. Um, because I would never call someone at five o'clock in the morning or six o'clock at night. I just expected that everyone else would, you know, be the same as me. <laughs> and so when I started getting the calls at five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock at night, I'm thinking, what the hell's going on? Um, so it was about um, really starting to respect myself and my boundaries and being able to articulate that to others, which is not always easy to do if, if that doesn't come, you know, naturally to you. Um, <clears throat> so I have become much better at that and now I'm very clear around um, those sorts of things. So I think that's a really big one is really being clear in yourself what your boundaries are and then being able to make sure your customers really truly understand that and your clients will respect that because people will push as well so you need to be able to well, certainly for me I needed to be able to stand firm in that and say okay well if you want that this is the next step for you um, and this is how we can deliver that to you instead of going oh yeah okay here we are <laughs> um, so that's been a really big one for me and that's still something I think for me, um, it's, it just, I need that constant reminder in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, but I think also it's about how strong um, you can be and, and how strong I have been in, in points where I think, okay, what am I going to do now? Um, if you dig deep, because it's never going to be an easy journey as a business owner, like there's, it's, there's highs and lows. It's like a roller coaster. Um, and, and I think just having that resilience and being, okay, you know what? I'm okay with this. I'm just going with the flow. And it's interesting because one of, one of um, our early mentors and, and who is now a very good friend of ours, he said to us right at the beginning, he said, if, um, you know, being an entrepreneur, it's really, um, and I, can't, I can't quite remember the exact phrase, but it's about the level of uncertainty with which you can cope. Um, and that has honestly proven so true. <laughs> um, so I think it is about being able to trust um, in yourself and that things will work, but, but keeping that logical um, back up as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So those yeah. are really, yeah, yeah. It's just being able to bounce when you need to bounce and um, having that resilience and and just sticking at it. You just you just have to be motivated all the time. Um, and I think for people that are looking at becoming coaches, one of People say to me all the time, oh, you work from home, how do you, how come you don't sit in front of the TV? Or so I'm like, oh my God, I couldn't think of anything worse, to be honest. Who <laughs> is um, all the time? I don't have time to watch TV. I have so much stuff recorded <laughs> so that I can, you know, catch up on weekends or something. <laughs> you know, and, I, and, and that's not living anyway. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. So, but I think for a lot of people, you know, just finding that, internal motivation to, to just buckle under and do it um, when you're not accountable to somebody, which then, you know, if you have a coach that can do that for you, great, if you don't have that innate ability. Um, but, yeah, I think just that motivation and accountability is a, is a big one too if you're a solo, you know, yeah. Mm. So if you had to um, give anybody some last-minute tips, some wise words from someone who's been there and who's done it what would you say to someone who is going through the course at the present time who is coming towards the end and starting to feel the fear of oh my god i'm going to be qualified soon i'm going to be able to go out there and work with people and charge them and be seen and yeah. i'm going to be able to do this what would you say to them for where they're up to now do it 
um, just do it. What's the worst that can happen? You know, like I think honestly, the that fear of being seen or being judged or any of those things, what does it matter? You know, like because for that person that actually said something, there might be 10 people which you've actually been able to impact in a positive way. So, um, yeah, I think it's just a case of being brave and when you know who you are in yourself and you know what it is that you're here to do and, and you're going forward with good intention, then you just have to, you just have to do it and trust that that is where you should be um, and let everything else just wash off, essentially. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the biggest things moving forward. Just don't, don't let the fear stop you or if you do, don't let it stop you for long. Yeah. Awesome. Great yeah. advice. Now I have one last question for you, Nero. Are you ready yeah. for it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so even with all the ups and downs, yeah. all of the challenging times, the late nights, the early mornings, the needing to set boundaries, per perhaps take, feeling like you're being taken advantage of at some point, with all of that, would you ever go back to working for someone else and stop being an entrepreneur, stop working for you? Never. No. I think, um, yeah, it's what, what it gives you, um, being in your own business and being able to run your own race, do what you love, work it around a family, do all of those things. Um, it just, it, you know, nothing else compares. And um, so would I choose to go back to a job if, no, never. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope that I haven't painted it out actually to be all hard, but I think, um, you know, there's so many awesome things. To, it, like, I said, like we do, we literally pinch ourselves every day. It's like, you know, this is amazing. And we go and have lunch twice a week and he serves when he wants. And I pick up my daughter and drop her off. And like, we are so blessed. Um, but I think in a lot of cases, people just aren't prepared for how difficult the journey can be sometimes. So I hope I haven't really focused on this. The bad no, no. Actually, I think it's great. I think it's a nice balance because, you know, you can have these dreams to go in and build these great online, online courses or businesses, but if they take work and, you know, while you can hold on to the dream and what that means for you, what it represents for you, does it represent financial freedom? Does it represent more time with your family? Does it represent you can go and travel and work from anywhere? Whatever that dream represents for you and what you want to get out of it, you've got to be prepared to take the steps forward, to take action and to keep moving forward, even when you get knocked back a few times, because you will, you know, even just being in my own practice the last six, six seven years, starting the Institute two years ago, uh, it's been a tremendous learning curve. I didn't know how I was going to do these things when I started. But I learnt, I kept showing up every day. I kept asking myself, what's one thing I can do today to take a step forward, to figure something out, to make something happen or initiate something else? And it was just the consistent action. And that's really what it, it comes down to. So it's, I think it's good to keep it real and to let people know there are so many people out there who have figured out the formula or the strategy, who have put the model in place to be able to create their, their ideal lifestyle and you can do it too are you you're listening to me you can do it too but you've got to be prepared to go after what you want by putting in the effort and action so so i think it's great to have a balance i mean you, you you're clearly blessed every day you're pinching yourself i'm doing the same thing and, and and you know i work hard and i love what i do i wouldn't change it for anything in the world but it, it is work and the, the good thing is i get to balance that with time with my family, time with my beloved husband and the kids and, and doing the things that I really want to do. So it's good to, it's good to be realistic, to, to, to understand that yeah, it's going to take some work, but it is achievable. You can do it. And Nerida Weaver, thank you so much. You've been here today sharing with us your journey and proving to us that you absolutely can create an online business that supports you and your lifestyle. Thank you so much for being here. 
No, my pleasure. Thank you. And hopefully we'll catch up again very soon. We will, we will, we will. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much, everybody. Thanks, students. Thanks, other visitors to the website, to watching this video, to being a part of this conversation. We love to bring you coaching conversations. They're going to help you to light the way in your business and life. And we hope today has been super valuable for you. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care.